coming up on ATV News. Blue Square residents are surprised to find out where their rent was going. Parking spots like this can be hard to find on campus, but will that be changing soon? And police are still searching for a man who attempted to commit suicide. We'll tell you what he did that has police looking for him. In sports, the USU men's basketball team dropped one on the road, but there are two other Aggies playing for a national championship right now. In weather, the sun was here yesterday, but the clouds are here now. I'll tell you if they'll be sticking around. It's all coming up on ATV News. Welcome to ATV News, I'm Brandon Fonda. And I'm Jenna Lynn. Well, we all know that college can be expensive. You have to pay thousands of dollars on tuition, books, food, rent. Well, luckily I don't because I'm married, Most so I people. get a grant. But what if your money wasn't going to any of those things and someone was stealing it? That's exactly what happened at, at Blue Square here on Utah State's campus. Mitchell Watson was accused of embezzling money from the residents. Watson was charged in November with seventh with in November seventh with five counts of perjury, which are all third degree felonies. He was also charged with five counts of theft. His bail was set at thirty thousand dollars. After residents say their money went missing, police say someone who looked like Watson was caught on camera depositing the money into his personal account. Watson's original preliminary hearing was set for last Wednesday, but has been rescheduled for March 9th at 9 a.m. Parking on campus can sometimes be tough to find. Our David Matthew Stewart checks out some new changes that you may want to know about. Last week, the USU Parking and Transportation Committee approved a resolution that they hope will lead to a lot more of this. These changes that were voted on um, last week will take place starting July 1st. So in the fall, there'll be a lot of new changes for students coming back to school. The Big Blue Terrace is becoming a 24-hour facility. Until now, many students have avoided paying to park by leaving their car put until the ticket taker left at 10 p.m. However, under the new policy, the terrace will be manned 24 hours a day, five days a week, with a fee being charged between 7.30 a.m. Monday and 7 o'clock Friday night. The blue lot, just east of the terrace, will still drop their gates daily at 7.30 a.m., but now plan to charge until 11 p.m., unless you've purchased a blue pass, in which case you'll be able to come and go as you please after 5 p.m. In the meantime... From 6 to 8 o'clock a.m., Students who use the Hyper Building and the Field House will be able to park in the Big Blue Terrace. Frisch Connect also hinted that we may see some new parking available near the Legacy Fields before the Aggie Life and Wellness Center project has finished. I'm not sure how many, I don't know numbers quite yet, but they are aware of this demand that it will increase for parking. Which brings us to the red parking lot, just west of the Merrill Kazir Library, where the old Ag Sci building used to stand. Up until now, the red lot has remained practically deserted at night. However, thanks to the new policy change starting in July, you'll be able to park here free of charge after 5 p.m. If students do have concerns with these things, please, please voice your concerns to us. Make sure your voices are heard. David Matthew Stewart, ATV News. If you have any ideas you would like to share with your student advocates, the USUSA Academic Senate meets Tuesday evenings at 5 p.m. and TSC 336. A whole city block was closed down last week because a man threatened to commit suicide and police are still searching for him. This is what Chad Laughlin told police. He threatened to use strychnine, a chemical that is deadly when it comes in contact with the eyes or mouth. These photos are from the scene before he was transported to Logan Regional Hospital. A family member came to get him from the hospital, but police say Laughlin assaulted this person and fled. Laughlin is currently on probation for a bomb threat made in 2011 and will return to prison when found. If you have any information on Chad Laughlin and his whereabouts, contact Smithville Police at 435-753-7555. Coming up, Utah may be getting a new state symbol. 
college of engineering is learning by smashing. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Utah is sprucing down a state symbol, meaning Utah may be getting a new state tree, one that doesn't have Colorado in the title. Logan Canyon is filled with aspens. And last week, the Senate approved a measure to make the quaking aspen the new state tree. The current tree is the Colorado blue spruce, which only exists in 1% of Utah, while the quaking aspen is found in 10%. It's not important in the grand scheme of things what tree is the state tree, you know. It's not going to make a huge difference. Uh, Colorado blue spruce as a lot of people call it, uh, that's just a common name and we could call it Bob's Spruce or Green Spruce or whatever we wanted. Utah legislator is still deciding whether or not to make the change proposed by the Senate. There are many labs on campus, but only one that gets to smash stuff. The College of Engineering Structure Testing Lab, or Smash Lab for short, gets to do just that. We show you how smashing can help with creating. The Smash Lab here at Utah State helps others build bridges by destroying them. Labs such as the Smash Lab are, are really unique uh, in the ability to, to test um, structural components to failure. Something that this ram or smasher can do fairly easy. Almost, uh, you know, break anything that, uh, that, we've, that we need to. Pushing this button applies thousands of pounds of pressure per second. That's 2,000 pounds right there. Up to 1.2 million pounds of force. Turning rebar into scrap metal, cement into dust, and bridge beams into broken ones. After this beam is crushed, students analyze the data and then publish it so other institutions can build better bridges in the future. We give that report to the U.S. Department of Transportation uh, with recommendations on how we can better our design methods. And to better those designs, students tested the weight capacity on this 49-year-old bridge. It broke at 359,000 pounds. They also do test deflection. During the test, it takes readings as the, the load is applied. And it will take a reading at the failure point also, so we know exactly how far that moves. Failure test that students run in here so that they don't happen outside the lab. The I-35 bridge in um, Minneapolis that failed a few years ago, um, those are high profile failures and, and we need to do everything we can to make sure that those don't happen again. A responsibility that these students take pride in. We are dealing with life safety. Uh, it, there's, it's a lot of, of burden on your shoulders, but it's also very challenging and very fun. The Smash Lab also tests columns and floor strength to make sure the, that buildings are earthquake resistant. 
For more than 30 years, Leonard Rosenban has been teaching at Utah State University, but this will be his final semester before he retires. ATV's Misty Inglet caught up with the professor to get his thoughts on leaving USU. What do you do? Many students have heard that question in Leonard Rosenban's classes since he first began teaching in 1983. Rosenban says he has always tried to make his lectures engaging for everyone. The one thing that I really loved about his classes was that he would uh, be going through his lecture and he really made it sound like a story. He would just be telling us this story and it's easy to sit and listen to someone tell a story instead of read you a page from a book. He was really good at lecturing. He made it interesting because he explained the what happened during the time, not just the dates and everything, but the quality of living during that time. Something else students say they enjoy about Rosenbaum's lectures is how casual he is. It's not uncommon to see him kick off his shoes and sit cross-legged on the table. It's stuff like this that students say keeps their attention. Through these lectures, Rosenbaum also hopes to show students their potential for success. I have a teaching philosophy. It is simply to get students to achieve at the levels that they actually are capable of, but often fear approaching. This philosophy has led him to become a well-liked professor who many will miss when he retires. I think losing Professor Rosenban is good and bad. Good so he can finally retire, bad that it's losing such a fantastic professor. I tried as hard as I could to help students realize their potential. That's what Rosenband hopes to be remembered for. Misty Inglet, ATV News. Rosenband plans to use his retirement to spend more time with his wife and to write a book. Coming up on ATV News, Jason Borba will have your Cache Valley weather report. The current temperature in Logan is 37 degrees. Need an adventure? The outdoor recreation program at USU offers a wide variety of rental equipment. From winter gear like skis, snowshoes, and snowboards, to summer must-haves like kayaks, rafts, and camping gear. From sleeping bags to Dutch oven necessities, we have it all. So stop in and see us. Located at 950 East, 1000 North, in the basement of the distribution building behind Romney Stadium, we're open Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So stop in or call to get your gear today. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Look at me! Hey! Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you because no one Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Welcome back. All right, Jason, so, I mean, the last couple days were pretty warm, it and was. then today kind of just went downhill. Yeah, yesterday was nice, sunny, like, we were wearing jackets, it felt really good. Today it's cold, at least the sun's out, there was supposed to be snow, but uh, maybe we'll see that a little bit later. Let's kick it outside and see what it looks like right now. As you can see, it is nice and sunny, you can't really see many clouds out there. Uh, you see that guy walking on, on the quad. It's a good day to be out there, it is a little bit cold, so just keep that jacket on. But other than that, it's looking pretty nice. Let's take a look at our national radar. And there we are in the east coast over in the new england area you can see that they have a, a storm system a little bit they're getting some precipitation in the mix of like rain and snow so it's not too pleasant over there over here on the west coast oregon and washington are uh, getting some storms also california is looking pretty clear right now over here in the main in the great plains they have some tornado warnings for tonight 
And then also in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Michigan, they have blizzard warnings, even though there's not much activity going on right now. Let's kick it over to Utah, where we reside. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of activity up in the north part of the state. Provo is getting blasted right now, which uh, depending on how you feel about them, it's either good or bad. In Salt Lake, they have a little bit of precipitation also, a mix of rain and snow. And then up here in Logan, we just have a little blimp, not too much. And uh, like we saw outside, we don't, have, we don't have anything just yet. So let's look at our seven day forecast. And you can see, I put 80% chance of snow for today, but so far it's been a 0% chance of snow. Maybe tonight that'll change, but uh, tomorrow we're not expecting snow because it is supposed to be partly cloudy and 35 degrees. On Friday, the snow could come back. There's about a 50% chance, so just be prepared for that. And then on Saturday, it's going to be cloudy with some sun and a high of 38 degrees. And then for your weekend, starting on Sunday, you will, we will get up to 41 degrees, and then it's just going to keep on climbing from there, Monday 42, Tuesday 45. So that's going to be a good start to get you ready for your spring break if you're going anywhere warm. These in increasing temperatures will be a good yeah. thing to see here. Well, before the spring break, so does this white bow tie that you have on <laughs> signify anything? Like snow? Uh, it means I'll wear the white as long as the white stays away from outside. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's good, for, it's good for sports that are going to start coming in outside as tennis and softball it's start true. kicking up. It's true. We've got a bunch of sports, spring sports that are coming up. So that'll be pretty awesome. Um, so coming up, Aggies basketball had a tough loss against UNLV. We'll tell you the final scores. And the annual teddy bear toss, this weekend's updates on our boys at the rink. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. Yeah, but that won't happen without women. you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the yeah. life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. If you could get a little closer. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Looking for these? You drive buzzed, it could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome to this week's edition of ATV Sports. I'm Tamara Bradley. Well, it's been a pretty eventful weekend for the Aggies, so let's jump right in with some men's basketball. The Utah State men's basketball team was riding a three-game winning streak when they hosted UNLV on Saturday. In their first meeting this season, the Rebels ran all over USU, winning 62-42. The Aggies were looking to get revenge on their home court. We pick up the action in the second half with UNLV leading by three, but not for long as freshman Jalen Moore hits a big three-pointer to the game at 45 with 12 minutes to go. Unfortunately for the Aggies, that is as close as they would get for the rest of the game. Here DeVille Smith gives his team their biggest lead of the game at five. USU couldn't buy a bucket in the second half. Preston Medlin can't get his jumper to fall, and Kyle Davis is there for the offensive board, but the same result. If the Aggies weren't missing shots, they were getting blocked by Kem Birch, who had a career high nine blocks. With a little over a minute to go, UNLV's Roscoe Smith puts the icing on the cake with this sweeping hook. The Rebels win 73-62 and sweep the season series against the Aggies. I didn't think we didn't play hard. I didn't, I didn't feel that way at all. We just didn't play very well, and they're the reason we didn't play well. I mean, they controlled everything. 
USU was back in action last night when they took on the sixth ranked team in the country. In San Diego State, the Aztecs put on a show in front of their home fans by running all over the Aggies 60 to 45. USC will look to rebound at home Saturday when they host Fresno State. Utah State hockey team is held its final two games of the regular season at home over the weekend. The Aggies hosted the BYU Cougars Friday night and Saturday they played against Weber State in senior night. The Aggies got off to a quick start when they scored this goal after only 59 seconds had ticked off the clock. This set off the teddy bear toss, which is an annual event where fans throw stuffed animals on the ice after USU scores their first goal. The players collected the plush toys to give to children throughout the valley. The Aggies kept things hot on the ice as they scored five goals in the first seven minutes of the game, totaling in the first period alone. USU cooled off just a little bit as the only as they only scored eight goals, six goals for the remainder of the game for a total of 12. BYU never got any closer than this shot as the Aggies shut out the Cougars. USU won 12 to zero. I'm proud of the boys, the way they've responded and gotten ready to play. And we're really looking forward to Weaver and give them a little payback for the two wins that they took from us early in the year. USU took on the Weaver State Wildcats in this last home game of the season Saturday. Seniors Sean Irwin, Chase Allington, Ty Johns, and Bryce Scherschel were honored at the beginning of the game for senior night. And the team wastes no time with forward Stu Hepburn making a goal in the first period. By the end of the second period, Utah State was up 5-1. The Aggies close the game and the season with an 8-2 win against Weaver State. The team finished third in the West and head to Flagstaff this weekend to take on Denver in regionals. Well, Ryan Campbell and John Larson play handball on the club team at Utah State. They won national championship in the doubles competition last year and are headed to North Carolina for this year's tournament. Campbell and Larson held their last practice Friday before leaving Monday for the championship. Campbell said last year they entered the competition as a dark horse and took people by surprise, but this year they are facing the top competitors. Even though they'll face tougher competition, Campbell said he feels confident that they can repeat as national champions because of the chemistry they have with each other. It's just like an extension of my arm. I know where he is. He knows where I am. If I leave the ball, I have complete confidence that he's going to get it. The tournament begins February 19th. Campbell also won the national championships in the singles division last year and said he has high hopes he'll be able to repeat in the competition as well. Well, we're in day 12 of the 2014 Winter Olympics and Team USA is still going strong. Let's take a look at how our athletes are competing in Sochi, Russia. Oh. Into the double oh. 460 oh. Kevin oh. Half-pipe skiing is something we've seen in the Winter X Games, but this is the first year it's been a sport in Olympics. USA's David Wise scored a high of 92 on his run, landing him in the first ever free ski half-pipe gold, which sounds like kind of a big deal to us. Let's take a look at uh, the updated medal count. The United States leads all countries with 23 medals, including 7 gold, 5 silver, and 11 bronze. They're... Um, it's two days tied for second place with the host country and the Netherlands, each with 22 medals. Well, hopefully USU hockey will get one. I heard they, 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 they have three games in a row now that they've won. Right, or something like right. That. and I think they have a pretty good chance. They're doing pretty well, so yeah. we'll keep our fingers crossed for them. Yeah, hopefully. When we come back, people are getting puppies, but not to keep. And an Olympic sport is making its way to USU's campus. Pep Talk Center. We have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Everybody has a dream. My 
plan was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Need an adventure? The Outdoor Recreation Program at USU offers a wide variety of rental equipment, from winter gear like skis, snowshoes, and snowboards, to summer must-haves like kayaks, rafts, and camping gear. From sleeping bags to Dutch oven necessities, we have it all. So stop in and see us. Located at 950 East, 1000 North, in the basement of the distribution building behind Romney Stadium, we're open Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So stop in or call to get your gear today. Welcome back. Taking care of a puppy is a lot of work. You have to feed them, take them outside, give them baths. But what if you could have the perks of a puppy without all the work? Our Becky Eisenhower is live to show us how that's possible. Becky, who do you have there? This is Bernie. He's an eight-week-old beagle mix, and he is just a bundle of joy. So how can you rent something like this, either him or one of his friends, without all of the work? This is Gus. He's an 11-week-old Shih Tzu Terrier mix and is one of three puppies you can rent in Cache Valley. I just always wished I could rent a puppy and I thought it should exist, so I had to make it happen. So people just get on the website, it's puppiesforrent.com, and you click on the location you're at and then you can see which puppies are available, pick a time, and put your address and information in and then the puppies delivered to your door when you specified. There are puppies around. Lots of people, lots of people have dogs that get unexpected litters and then don't know what to do with them. And often they'll sell them for pretty cheap or even give them away for free. We usually just get mutts, like puppies that are looking for home. We try to get them adopted, like find their permanent home by the time they're three or four months old. So they're all really young, but yeah, we take in pretty much any breed. From big to small, students say puppies even help with stress. Dogs are like therapy. And you feel better after you play with a dog. And puppies are just a cuter therapy. While renting puppies is a popular choice for relaxation, that's not the only reason people rent puppies here in Logan. He told me that he had something for Valentine's Day, but you know, it, under these certain conditions, we had to be back in my apartment at this time, and this was happening, so. I didn't know what it was, but then they came knocking on the door and um, just a gentleman was holding this little beagle puppy and his name was Bernie. So guys, get your puppies soon so you can pick up those girls. And it's also a good tool for relaxation during finals. Back to you, Jenna. Thanks, Becky. Well, he is adorable. He's got quite the feisty little thing. Whole cam the whole studio in here was going all over him. He's so cute. All right, for more information about how you can rent a puppy, visit puppiesforrent.com. We may not be in Sochi, but with a class here in Logan, USU students are sweeping their way closer to the Winter Olympics. So welcome to our curling clinic. We do this once a year. Utah State's our, curling our class curling season, began this LA week, just in time for the Winter spring. Olympics. The end, there was a good turnout for the first class of the semester. It's combined with a clinic open to anyone interested in, in curling. The class is open to all levels of experience, whether you are a beginner or have taken the class several times. But how difficult is it to pick up? It depends on your, your personal athletic abilities and balance. I think for someone that's unsteady on the ice and just regular shoes, um, they might have a harder time, but it's something that anyone can learn. This curling class has been offered at Utah State for over four years now and continues to grow in popularity because of the Winter Olympics. Some of the students in this class are part of the Cache Valley Curling League and they help instruct during the curling clinics. The curling class is held at the Eccles Ice Center in Logan on Monday nights at 7.15. Thank you for joining us here on ATV News. Be sure and join us for next week's show. Have a great day, Cache Valley.